Sylvan Beach Amusement Park is one of the oldest parks in the country, and this place feels frozen in time. For some, that may be a negative, but for me, that's a positive. This park is a throwback vibe combined with some rare attractions you'll struggle to find elsewhere. So in this review, I'll explain why this park may be worth visiting on a road trip through New York. Sylvan Beach Amusement Park has been around since the 1870s. The park is located in central New York on the shores of Oneida Lake. This park feeds off the energy of the nearby village and beaches. To capitalize on this, Sylvan Beach Amusement Park is free admission and no gates so people can come and go as they please. If you want to ride anything, you can either purchase individual tickets or an all-day wristband. The latter costs roughly $35 as of 2022, and that is your best option if you want to ride multiple attractions. This park is a short detour off I-90 if you're on a road trip that way. When you arrive, you have two places to park. You can either park across the street or behind the amusement park. The lot across from the park can fill up quickly, but the lot behind the park has plenty of space for cars. Both lots cost $2 per hour or $10 for the entire day. As you walk down the midway, this park oozes a 1950s vibe. You have multiple arcades with giant flashy signs, plus a retro collection of flat rides. As someone who appreciates the history of theme parks, I liked this aesthetic. You just don't see it much anymore. Some of the rides and buildings admittedly do look a bit dated, but many rides were sporting fresh coats of paint, such as the Bomber Rollo Plane and the Galaxy Roller Coaster. And I imagine this place may have some nice lights at night once the sun goes down. I have visited on a holiday weekend in the afternoon and lines were non-existent. I could get on the next cycle of any attraction that I chose. This park does have rotating ride operators for the flat rides though. And this is even with the park being open just 4 days a week. This park is often open just Thursday through Sunday, plus any major holidays. So you may have to wait 2-3 minutes for an operator to finish a cycle on an adjacent ride before they can help you. While the park wasn't staffed as fully as some other parks, anyone I interacted with was friendly and they would load rides quickly once they came over. One word of warning I'll give you about visiting this park is to avoid it on a rainy day. This park is prone to closing early or not even opening at all if there's a stormy forecast. That sort of makes sense because this park thrives on attracting nearby beachgoers, so if it's a bad beach day, there isn't people to visit the amusement park. Many of the rides at this park are relocated. That's why even their newest attraction, the G-Force Rotor, looks pretty darn old. Because it is. The lone coaster here is an SDC Galaxy. While this ride has the familiar layout, it has three things going for it that make it better than the others out there. First, it offers great views of the lake and beach. Second, this one runs two car trains, so the drops have some air time in the back car. Third, the brakes towards the end fail to engage, so the final turns and humps, which are usually taken slowly, instead offer surprisingly strong laterals and an abrupt pop of air time. I love this finale. I have an entire review on this coaster if you want to learn more, and if you want to experience this coaster, note that you need at least two people, and they need to front load the train to prevent it from valleying. One other fun fact about this ride was that it was closed the past two years. It was closed in 2020, like the rest of the amusement park, due to New York's COVID-19 pandemic regulations. They were quite strict. Then in 2021, Osprey made a nest on the coaster. Because of how these birds are territorial and endangered, the park and local nature groups decided it would be best if the coaster remained closed until the birds left their nest and migrated down south in the fall. For flat rides, you have an interesting mix. If you love spinning rides, do not miss Tip Top. You basically ride in a teacup on this bouncing platform. The cars are incredibly easy to spin, which results in an extremely dizzying experience. I also want to point out the Himalaya. Now this one only runs forwards, but it has a high top speed, resulting in powerful laterals plus little pops of airtime on the humps. One spinning ride I missed out on was the G-Force Rotor. It's my understanding this ride has been closed for a few years, and I hope it reopens because there aren't many chance rotors left. I love the centripetal forces these rides produce. The two most thrilling flats are Rocco Plane and Bomber. The latter is the fastest Rollo Plane I've ever experienced. This ride gave some weightlessness over the top when the arm was positioned vertically. 
Then this ride has some of the most violent laterals I've ever experienced since the cars would twist out of inverting at the very last second. Then I was comically tossed side to side when the arms went horizontal. Rocco Plane is a high speed ferris wheel that you can invert if you strategically hold the lever in front of you. This results in some great hang time. Then for kids, there's a dedicated kitty land with 10 rides exclusively for them. This park also has a classic pretzel dark ride named Laugh Land. The visual quality was on par with a carnival dark ride, but there was a well-timed gag every few seconds typically accompanied by a sound effect. It wasn't super scary, but it's just an old fashioned ride that you don't see made anymore. The lone water ride is the bumper boats, which are not included with wristbands. As a result, I didn't see anyone riding them all day long. Another major part of a visit to Sylvan Beach are the arcades. This park has multiple arcades. The ones owned by the amusement park have a collection of older games. Then smack dab in the center of the park is Corello's Carousel Arcade. This one features more modern games plus an 1890s loof carousel that is in pristine condition. Sylvan Beach used to own this carousel themselves, but it was sold and it's in good hands. Carousel lovers should not miss out on this ride. This park also features one of the last fascination parlors out there. If you've never played this game before, it's an addictive combination of skee-ball and bingo. Games cost just 25 cents, so it's an absolute bargain compared to most games. This attraction had a delayed opening, and I'm not sure if it's closed on less busy days, but I was thankful to see it open for me. I didn't see many food stands in the park, but I think that's deliberate because the nearby beach and village have plenty of sit down and quick service restaurants to choose from. So do I recommend Sylvan Beach Amusement Park? Coaster credit hunters probably shouldn't go out of their way for this park, but it can be a quick and cheap pit stop if you're passing by. It can be reasonably added to a trip with some of New York's other theme parks such as Seabreeze or Great Escape. Just remember this park's limited days of operation when you try to go there. But I think this park is worth visiting if you're into classic amusement rides and classic amusement parks. This place has a nice feel to it, and I had a few hours of fun lapping the flat rides and playing many rounds of fascination. Then this park can be paired with the nearby beach for a relaxing day of fun. So those are my thoughts on Sylvan Beach Amusement Park in central New York. What are your thoughts on the small amusement park on the shore of Oneida Lake? Do you like this park's retro feel? Let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.